Hi, we're here day two at Black Hat in Las Vegas. I'm here with Ben Feinstein, who is the director of research at Secure Works. Ben, thanks for joining us. No problem. Uh, Secure Works kind of stumbled on some some research and then got going with it and discovered a pretty impressive uh, Russian counterfeit check scam operation going on. Can you tell That's us right about now. that? Um, so we uh, we've been on top of the Zeus threat for many years now, um, as it's one of the primary uh, means that these groups are committing financial fraud. Um, so uh, Joe Stewart, our uh, malware researcher up in Myrtle Beach, was uh, analyzing the Zeus sample and noticed uh, that uh, very unusually the Zeus uh, Trojan sample reached out and established a PPTP tunnel uh, to a remote server. PPTP is the point-to-point -point tunneling protocol typically used for virtual private networks. Um, so this was unusual. And that's quite unique, right? This is not normal behavior of Zeus. Um, so that piqued his interest and he began investigating a little bit further, um, looked into the server, uh, the protocols it was using and began monitoring um, the activity uh, that this group was uh, putting through this tunnel and through the affected bot. And so pretty quickly, uh, Joe uh, noticed that, uh, one, there was no encryption being used on the link. This was simply uh, an encapsulated VPN with no uh, encryption wrapped around it. Um, we uh, And that's a tell, tell sign that they're up to no good? No, it's, it's basically unusual. Mm -hmm. Typically, uh, in a corporate environment, you set up a VPN sure. and you kind of use encryption on it. Um, so we suspect that the, the VPN tunnel, or the PPTP tunnel, was really just being used to enable to bypass all sorts of NAT and, and middle boxes um, to allow unfettered proxy access, them, them to proxy all their traffic directly through these boxes um, and, and load, you know, get services back and forth. Um, so what, what Joe uncovered is a really a vertically uh, integrated Russian check caching or Russian check counterfeiting uh, ring. Um, it involved aspects of um, harvesting large scale numbers of check images uh, from back end systems, uh, printing counterfeit checks using commercial check printing software and, and professional paper and ink, um, using stolen credit card numbers to defraud an overnight delivery service that would deliver these checks to a set of money mules. And the same group was also um, scraping job boards to recruit new money mules and had a whole money mule recruitment and management operation that they were then using to cash out um, these uh, you know, stolen, stolen funds. So where does Zeus play into all of this? So Zeus is really just a tool. Uh, Zeus is a, is a Trojan toolkit. Um, it's in widespread use. There's a variety of, uh, variety of uh, versions out there. It's essentially uh, a kit to build a Trojan. Um, and the folks use it to commit financial fraud, typically, um, to gain uh, remote access to a system. Um, and it's very modular. There's uh, capabilities that can be added and plugged into Zeus, um, you know, uh, back connect capabilities, um, proxy capabilities, password stealing, of course, um, and then also you know, uh, customized web injections uh, to help uh, steal credentials. But in this particular case, what was it needed for? I mean, it, 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 the computers were infected and then... Um, so the, the Zeus uh, Trojan allowed the foothold for these attackers on that system. Um, and also, uh, we believe they were using Zeus to capture, uh, and also the Gozi Trojan in some cases, which is another um, financial or banking Trojan, to steal credentials to job websites even, uh, to further this cycle of money mill recruitment, uh, check counterfeiting, cashing out through the money mules. So, as we have a uh, wide assortment of alcohol being pushed out behind us, um, these are clearly for the uh, yeah. Russian yeah. cyber criminals that are involved. Uh, they, I don't see that. Yeah, <laughs> right, that's true. Um, uh, the, but were, were, they, were, they using, were they using these infected computers as a botnet to, to send spam to recruit people, or, or how, how, did they, how, did they find, how did they find the people that they wanted to recruit? Um, basically, they would. Uh, was getting the emails? They would access these jobs. Uh, so a lot of these people were, were looking for jobs. They're uh, they're out there posting their information on job boards, seeking employment. Um, so what the the criminal op operation did is they uh, essentially scraped a lot of uh, information for these job seekers and reached out and contacted them using some pretty classic money mill recruitment. So they scraped it by having these computers infected and they were able to get their credentials to go onto the job board? Is that how it works? So in, in an operation like this, they're capturing a lot of credentials and we believe that they were able to gain credentials to some of these job boards. So they would have access uh, like an employer, a potential employer would to these customers. And then they would see people who were looking for jobs and then they would contact them? Is that how Correct. Right? They would reach out via email, um, oftentimes using a uh, web-based email uh, service 
reach out to these people, uh, you know, say they're, they're um, the traditional kind of money mill recruiting, uh, international financial services, we need local agents to uh, transfer funds through bank accounts and such. Um, and of course, some proportion of, of these uh, folks um, decided and they were responded to these, uh, and then it, some proportion of those folks actually did go and become um, money mules. Something like three thousand people, I believe. Correct. In, this document. Um, in the in the about twelve months uh, of data we have on this operation, um, nearly three thousand job uh, seekers actually responded to the come on emails. So uh, presumably many more emails were sent, but almost three thousand of them actually responded. Is this this operation aside from the VPN? It sounds fairly typical of things we've seen in the past? Well, I think the interesting, uh, it's not typical in that the, the scale that they were able to capture these check images, um, our understanding is there were two separate um, check image systems that, had, uh, that they were accessing. One um, is a system or, or a service that's used typically by uh, check caching storefronts. Um, and those uh, storefronts use anti-fraud technologies, the, the checks are scanned, um, there's a back-end service provider that, that analyzes the images, does anti-fraud. Um, but all these images are stored in a back-end database at this service. Um, so uh, after compromising credentials to the back-end anti-fraud check archival service, the attackers in this case were able to essentially pull out uh, images, you know, uh, graphical images for all these checks. The second service um, being large banks, or excuse me, banks or large retailers uh, hire a service to basically archive all their check images that they're processing. And in this case, we observed a SQL injection um, exploit that was being used by the attackers to uh, gain access, unauthorized access to this check repository and then pull all this information out. So very well orchestrated, and very complex. So uh, uh, um, highly, highly integrated, there were different groups that were um, doing different functions, right? And, and we see this more and more uh, in these kind of groups where they're vertically integrated criminal to criminal businesses. Have they been taken down? Have you been in contact with so the authorities? So we are, we are uh, you've been actively uh, you know, working the investigation with the authorities and assisting as we can. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, hopefully they're not getting the alcohol and hopefully these guys will get caught. Uh, and uh, any takeaways for enterprises from this? Are some of our listeners here? Yeah, so there's, there's a few things a uh, business can do to, to help um, reduce uh, check fraud of this nature. One is a system uh, known as positive pay, which is essentially an extra reconciliation step that a business can request to their bank um, for the checks that they're writing. So essentially they will have to uh, reconcile the checks they believe they've written with the checks that the bank is uh, processing, and if there are discrepancies, then the, the client or the, the uh, customer would have to reconcile that. Um, some uh, financial institutions also offer a positive pay-like service on ACH, on electronic uh, automated clearinghouse transactions. Um, so that would also be something an organization could do to, to better uh, protect themselves. Okay, wow, good stuff. So uh, in, it's like sort of amazing. That, I mean, did you ever think when you guys were doing the initial investigation that you would have stumbled on, onto something this grand in scope? I don't think so. I think, you know, it's following the, the breadcrumbs or following the footprints through the snow, if you will. Um, you know, when you, you see something interesting, you never ne necessarily know where it's going to lead. And I, I could tell um, Joe was, was very excited. Joe Stewart. Joe Stewart. Stewart. This, was Joe's, uh, this was Joe's discovery, and he was very uh, excited at, as he was uncovering, you know, the different layers of this. Yeah. And Black Hat 2010, great place to unveil. It is. Okay. Yeah. Well, Ben, I appreciate you being with us, and always very smart work you guys are doing there, as always. Thanks. So uh, we appreciate some of the stuff you guys have discovered down the road. Great, Dan. I appreciate the invitation. Absolutely. Thank you.